Thursday and Saturday. And then the women have Wednesday um, only, I guess, starting on Wednesday, Monday, and Friday. But they want everyone to be home together on Sunday. And that's uh, so there's the restriction will last 15 days. But I thought it was very interesting how they're um, moving towards, you know, having one day to be a day where people are together and, and just don't go out to buy or sell or do anything, right? Um, that's one of the things that just crossed through. Um, this adds to whatever, you know, to video, there's a video from Canada, uh, a politician from over there calling for every, for banning of uh, buying and selling on Sundays in Canada. Um, and I don't know if you guys seen that video. Um, I don't have it right here, but I'll share it next time. There's another movement that's been growing. And I, I know if you can't see the screen right there, what I'm sharing, just say something, send a message or something. But it's called this National and Global Day of Repentance. And it's a, it's actually a big, a big movement. You know that, that movement that's um, under the whole National Day of Prayer? That, that they're the same people that are moving um, these other um, fronts. Um, I don't know if someone's trying to talk or, or not. Okay, I guess not. So what they're trying to do here, um, and, and it's right, it's, it's, it's legit. I mean, it's not, it's not bad what they're trying to do. It's right here. It says they quote Second Chronicles seven fourteen. For if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Um, and they basically want the the nation, the United States, to do what Joel two says, and that is to come back to God because part of what's going on in in, in the crisis and the pandemias and um, you know, in society and all that stuff is because the nation has parted from God. Um, so they want to do a day. I think it's in September 26th. It's like September 26th. And it's going to last 10 days, 10 days of prayer and fasting. And um, they want the president to do a proclamation. And you can read it out here. It's a presidential proclamation. If you click it, um, if it takes too long, with we'll this legit in the country, I guess. Um, but I wanted to share something here too. Um, where was it? Right here. Right here. Uh, so it's part of the Review and Herald, X-ray, December 11, 1888. It says the Sunday movement is not making its way in darkness. And that's part of what I wanted to highlight right there. Um, a lot of these um, organizations, they, they, they have a lot of like pastors and leaders that are behind it. I think Job Dobson is behind this one and some other pastor, I forgot his name, that is very famous, but um, I forgot his name. But anyway, it, it, like, you can clearly see how a lot of people are using whatever is happening in the country to, um, to like move uh, their agendas forward, you know? to they're, they're just riding the wave you can say and it says it continues saying right here the leaders are concealing the true issue and many who, who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is pending so um that is why it's important to share the truth that we know right it says they are working in blindness they do not see that if a Protestant government sacrifices the principles that have made them a free and independent nation and through legislation, legislation brings into the Constitution principles, its principles that will propagate papal falsehood and papal delusion, they are plunging into Roman in, into the Roman horrors of the Dark Ages. So we have another part of the same group, and it's here in Charisma News. Um, and it's this uh, this rabbi, I think he's a rabbi, Jonathan Kahn, he's actually calling for this uh, National Day of Prayer and Repentance, which is being called the return. Um, and like I said, it's going to start September 26th, right there. And it's on the 40th, 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower, and they have 40 days before the election to pray so that um, 
to, to rescue the nation. Basically, that's what they're saying. I'm going to put a little bit of the video. If you guys have trouble with the audio, you guys could look for this. You know, you could Google it. Uh, just put this guy's name, put the title up here, and you can see the whole website and the video. But I'm, I'm going to see if we could hear a little bit of, of it. So um, it continues. Um, if you guys want to hear the whole thing, you just can. We don't have that much time. But anyway, you can feel the sense that they want a, a revival, and um, and and it's good. You know, we agree with a lot of that stuff, right? Um, but like the text over here was saying that there's a movement going on that's in darkness, right? It's in darkness, and a lot of people are not seeing, even those that are, you know, pushing for it. They don't see where where, where it's going to take us, right? So we we have a, a loud cry to give, right? We have we have um, the truth to give out. Uh, Revelation 18 says that the Protestant churches are going to be filled, filled, sorry. They're going to be filled with demons, right? All types, all types of demons, and that's because they um, they strayed from the path of righteousness. And a lot of these revivals are going to be what the Bible calls false revivals, right? And I'm not going to say all of them are, you know, all the people that are involved are genuinely, you know, um, doing this, you know, like um, on purpose, right, to deceive people. A lot of people are very genuine, right? And that is why we we have to. Uh, give out the voice that that 
um, true revival comes in obedience to the law of God, right? Um, I, I wanted to share another quote right here before I, I finish my part. It says right here, let the watchmen now lift up their voice and give the message, which is present truth for this time. We've read these quotes a lot of times, right? And it says, let us show the people where we are in prophetic history. So we, we are seeing a lot of these events are coming and they're going to start coming in waves and they're going to get more consecutive and more uh, frequent. And um, this is the time that God is giving us to lift up the voice and give the trumpet a, a, the right sound, right? It says over here, it is the duty of both watchmen and laymen to give the trumpet a certain sound. So this is the time to to give the trumpet a certain sound and to um, to warn the world that uh, of the judgments that are about to fall in the world. What, what, is, does anyone have any um, comments about this or anyone here uh, about what we've been seeing? Uh -huh. And he was saying, like, it's, you know, what if some people are doing, and then he has the president, you can say something off the, like, not scripted, or he just had something on his heart. And he basically said um, that our country had, been, had turned from God, but um, under this administration, that it's turning back. And he was encouraging everybody while they're at home to be reading their Bibles and things like that, and to be turning back themselves. So it kind of goes right along with what you're saying. Yes. 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 And at the, at the same time, you see, I think what makes unique the whole thing that, that we're going through right here in the United States with the coronavirus and throughout the world, that's getting the attention of a lot of Adventists. Um, and even though many don't speak about it, it's like a big elephant that's in the room, but no one wants to talk about it or address it. And that's the fact. Um, it's just the way that the, the government or the, you know, the world leaders are acting, right? There's just a lot of stuff that where there's a, um, they're trying to have more control over masses of people and have everyone to act in a certain way um, to fight this uh, unknown enemy, right? And and they use terms like the unknown enemy. They use terms like the war. It's a war. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the, uh, the this this whole front two fronts. Where you see the front of the of the Protestant churches uniting with the with the state, and at the same time you see you see states of head acting in unison to bring people to or masses to um, to act uh, the way they want them to act. I guess you could say. Anyone want to share something else? Hey. Hey, Al. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if any, uh, I don't know how many of you saw that um, this article that we're seeing um, last year in 2019 of the great exodus of the of the CEOs in the uh, United States. And also, um, this uh, the whole thing that's going on. A lot of people are seeing what Bill Gates is doing with the vaccines and stuff. I, I had this brother share to me this uh, video of uh, Bill Gates how he's trying to do like a microchip under the skin or something like that. And they're saying that that's like going to be the mark of the beast. So there's a lot of people that are watching the prophecies and like what's going on in the world, but at the same time, um, they're being misled too. You know. So we have the truth, um, not because we're special or anything. I think it's a, it's a great responsibility, but we have the truth uh, from the word of God and the spirit of prophecy, the help of the spirit of prophecy. And I think we have a responsibility to share it with others, you know, to to be a light um, to those that, that want to know what's going on, but don't can't grasp the whole idea or, or the whole truth, you know, as it is in the written the word of God. Um, so we're going to start this, um, uh, it, it, it has, it goes in hand with what we were going to, the chapter we're reading here in, uh, the great controversy page. Um, we have this hardcover one, it's page, here, let me go to it. It's uh, page 343, chapter 19, light, light through darkness. Um, and Damien is going to help us out with this, with this, uh, with this chapter. So he's going to lead it out. Yeah, so I don't know where's which one's here or which one's not, but here I'll only Okay, let's see. Chapter nineteen in Great Controversy. If you guys are following along, um, the beginning of the book uh, it starts talking about how God inspired others, you know, throughout history to you know ultimately write the Bible and. Also, including different writers like Helen White, uh, as they were inspired by God. Um, <clears throat> so this part here, it says, there's a lot of feedback. Uh, it says, the, the principles of God's dealing with men are ever the same. The important movements of uh, present have a par their parallel in those of the past. So there's a lot of things that are happening uh, in today's times that we see in parallel with what had ha what had happened before. Uh, something important to see is in the next the second paragraph. It says, uh, "No truth is more clearly taught in the Bible than that God, by His Holy Spirit, especially directs His servants on earth and uh, in the great movements for the carrying forward of the work of salvation." And here here it says. Men are instruments in the hand of God, employed by him to accomplish his purposes of grace and mercy. So it's really interesting how everybody had their part uh, to do in, you know, in reaching out to others. Everybody had uh, not just their part, but a special moment, a special time that God has planned, you know, in each of our lives to share to others. And also a granted measure of light. And with that light, we're, you know, we're responsible for, for sharing to others. Um, and eventually, uh, later on, we're going to learn how... Um, uh, each, uh, you know, thing that we, every, everybody in the Bible, each character in the Bible had its, like, necessary time to to, to spread that truth that they had. Um, so uh, something important to, to note is in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 and 10. And if you guys want to turn there with me, it says, uh, I am God and there is none like me, declaring uh, the end from the beginning. Uh, and from ancient times, the things that are not done yet. So I think uh, it's really cool because this reminds me a little bit about Job. Uh, towards the end, God tells him, like, you know, like, I'm God. I'm the one that's in control. And I think that's something very important to note is that uh, our, you know, using our own, like, power, using our own, uh, I guess, 
whatever you know intelligence that we have is is not enough like everything that has to come from god and god gives us the understanding to ultimately understand um god's word uh <clears throat> So let's see, uh, and then the, following that, that uh, verse on the next, on the fourth paragraph, it says, even prophets who were favored with special illumination of the spirit did not fully comprehend the importance of revelations committed to them. So who, who comes to mind? If anybody, who, who comes to mind? Uh, we're on uh, the beginning, it's... Yeah, yeah. Daniel comes to mind. Take mine. Oh. So one person that comes to mind is Daniel. So if we look at Daniel chapter eight, you guys want to turn it with me? It should be in the very beginning. Yeah. No, it's not there. It's not there. Yeah, that one's on. I'm gonna take off the audio. Oh, okay. You want me to just turn it off? Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so what comes to mind is Daniel in Daniel chapter 8, verse 15. Uh, we see, and it came to pass, uh, even I, Daniel, had seen the a vision and sought for the meaning, and behold, there stood before me an appearance of a man. So eventually, you know, Gabriel's the one that explains the vision. Um, but there was also um, uh, the 20, 2300 days prophecy, which was later revealed, you know, uh, later on. But here we see that. Um, but, uh, where Ellen White says, even prophets who were favored uh, with special illumination of, this, uh, of the spirit did not fully comprehend. So everything was uh, necessary to according according to God's plan. Everything to to how we're responsible for the light we have. Um, at the same time, um, uh, we we are responsible for. For continual searching of the scriptures, you know, um, it's a big mistake to come to the scriptures and think we know it all. You know, we've been having, we've had everything explained by Doug Bachelor and Mark Finley and Pastor Moore, you know, just for examples, and just say, you know what, we have everything, you know, uh, under control. I guess um, we 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 we've had a lot of Bible studies, we've had a lot of, um, I've heard a lot of sermons, and that takes us to a like a willful or negligent, um, a negligent rejection or a negligent, um, how can you say, just um, a lack of study, a profound study of the word of God. You know, we, we think, you know what, well, I've read the whole Bible several times and, you know, there's not much light for us. There's no more time prophecies. They all end in 1844. So in a way, we, we don't search diligently the scriptures as we should mm. right but um history is telling us and i think this chapter is telling us look back to history and see that you know the jews made a mistake mm. and their mistake was that they didn't improve that light which had been given to them they didn't mm. diligently search the scriptures then it, the, the the chapter really tells us look, go back to see the millerites 1844, they had they had the message right in part, but then they didn't improve in that light. They didn't continue to search the scriptures. And because of that, they had great disappointments. The disciples, look at the disciples, right? Mm -hmm. They had the truth. They even preached it, but they didn't fully comprehend because not because God wasn't willing to give the light, but because there was there was things in their heart. There was worldliness in their heart. There was pride. There was envy. That was impeding them to know the fullness of the truth that God had given. And that this is a warning for all of us, right? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to share a great controversy 344.3. If you guys are following along in the app, uh, it says they inquired and searched diligently concerning revelations given uh, them for generations that were yet unborn. So that's crazy, like to think that, uh, you know, people like, you know, they would still read, you know, like, like wholeheartedly, they would still read. Even though it wasn't going to be shared, you know that truth; those truths weren't going to be shared at that time. Uh, and then further down, down three hundred forty-four point three, it says, "What a rebuke to ease-loving, world-loving uh, indifference, which is uh, content to declare the prophecies uh, that prophecies can't be understood." So sometimes, like you know, I mean, God forbid that if that we think that way, that 
you know, oh, prophecies could not be understood. Um, because it's almost as if we're, you know, just kind of like giving up, like, oh, you know what, it couldn't be understood, so let's just move on to the next thing. But I think that's that's a that's a, a like a wake up call. It's a warning, you know, for us. Uh, it's either an encouragement or a rebuke, depending on which side you're on. You're on. So I think that's something that uh, that's really important that stood out to me in this chapter. Yeah, we should. Um, there's, there's a lot of times. There's many of us don't like prophecies, you know. Um, and we don't have to be studying prophecies day and night, but it's clearly shown that Jesus Christ, when he came, he had a prophetic insight of what his mission was. You know, mm -hmm. he came to this world and he was, and from the beginning, the chapter says it, that he would, uh, he would preach there in, in Mark chapter, chapter one. one, verse 15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. And then he would say, repent ye and believe the gospel so and this is actually the first words that christ really pre starts preaching you know in his ministry he starts saying the kingdom of god has come and repent ye um and i believe in a way this is the message we should be giving you know mm -hmm. because in reality as we see the signs of the times the kingdom of heaven has come. It, this is our time of trial. This is our time of our testing time. We are now in the spotlight, you know? And the world and the angels that are unseen, good and bad, they are watching our testimony, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I believe God is, um, in, in a way, telling us, you know, look at the ministry of Jesus and look how he was so focused on fulfilling everything. You know, he, he would say, it has to be done in certain parts of the gospel. It has to be done this way so that the the god the the prophecies or the, the whatever the prophets have said but it will be fulfilled you know mm -hmm. um you guys remember when mary his mother in the the wedding in canaan she was like you know she was trying to stimulate him or to in, in, um entice him to go and you know do a miracle and he was like what do you have with me woman you know it's not my time yet yeah and time after time he would say you know it's not my time it's not my time you know hold on how did he know it wasn't his time? Holy Spirit, I think. I mean. Yeah, the Holy Spirit was guiding him, but he knew prophecy. And the prophecy was the 27, he was anointed. And then three years and a half later, he was going to give his life mm -hmm. and, you know, make a sacrifice for the sins of the people. So he knew, like, every step that was going to take, his, like, take place, you know. He was not in darkness of what was coming up, you know. And I believe that's what God wants for us. You know? He doesn't want us. It, it, I think in a way we have a lot, so much fear in the midst of so much stuff that's going on in this world. I believe, you know, it's because we, we are, um, in a way, we still have a lot of darkness in our soul. I feel like sometimes like that. It's kind of hard to say, but yeah, that's true. I, I say it for myself too, you know. I was going to say that uh, it's kind of like the disciples, like they were, they were waiting for Jesus to set up that temporary kingdom, you know, and in a way, like we try doing our own thing, you know, like we try making our own plans, but, you know, ultimately God had a plan of salvation in mind. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. Um, well, I think uh, in uh, the book of Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonians, uh, Paul says that we're not children of darkness, but of light, right? Mm -hmm. And we should walk in light. So, um, it's time for us to us for regarding our time. So I don't know what else you, you found. Yeah. Um, sorry, oh, okay. So I think it's really interesting how, like, even after, like, you know, everything that the disciples had been through with Jesus, like seeing all these miracles and seeing, you know, all the things that Jesus had first of the same chapter that the, that the Messiah was to be cut off. Um, uh, so I see, like that's 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 a, that's like a warning that we have now, you know. And uh, the disciples, uh, and later on it says the disciples still clung with uh, undenying affection to their beloved master, and yet their minds were shrouded with uncertainty and doubt. I feel like uh, I wrote here just like uh, Moses and the Israelites, you know, like uh, after you know, well, one thing that comes to mind is like seeing like you know Moses, God is using Moses to cross the Red Sea, you know. After seeing that, like you know, I don't I don't know how how one could doubt, but at the same time, like you know, like. We were not. We were never in that situation. So we, at the same time, we have to think like you know, we're, we're human, just like they were. Yeah, yeah we are. Human. I was thinking right now. There's a whole thing when when coming back to the, the last slide about Jesus preaching that the kingdom of heaven that was come, 
What is that kingdom? What is the kingdom of heaven? It's, I mean, it's talking about like the second coming. The second so coming? It could be the second coming. Mm -hmm. But if you guys see right there in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 15 and 16, mm -hmm. It says it's clearly right there. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. So a throne is established and in, in establishes a kingdom. You know, it's, yeah. it's established in a kingdom. That's what makes up a kingdom, right? So it's a kingdom of grace. That's the, that's the kingdom that we're living in now. Right? That's the kingdom we're living in now, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's it because um, <laughs> the, it's, it's, a, it's, the whole plan of redemption, mm -hmm. the whole plan of redemption that was lived by Jesus Christ in this world and that is being fulfilled in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary right now. Mm -hmm. So um, in a way, that, that's what it is. And a lot of people take this and they distort it because they say, oh, we're under grace and we're not under, you know, the law. Right. So right now, the reason why in Revelation 18, it describes the daughters of Babylon or the Protestant churches as being filled with all types of spirits and demons is because they have set aside the law of God and they have just, you know, embraced what that grace is, you know. But I want to share something with you guys that I, I, I found when I was studying this, and it's found in Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 12 and verse 18. Um, I, I, I don't have it in the PowerPoint, but if you guys take your Bibles and go to Romans 6, chapter 12 and verse 18, it's clearly um, stated there what God is, is wanting for us today um, as we proclaim this kingdom of grace that has come. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield, yield your, ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have no dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. But then it says, it clarifies it. You're not under the law, you're under grace. But what then? Verse 15, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under the under grace? And he says, he answers himself, God forbid. And verse 16, it says, know ye not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or unto obedience unto righteousness. So that is the fight that is going on right now, you know. Mm -hmm. Satan wants worship, right? And God wants his, you know, his worship. Yeah. And worship to God goes through obedience and worship to Satan goes through disobedience. So we, we are called through this message of grace to obedience to the law of God, you know. Grace that permits sin in reality, is an abuse of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it distorts the character of God. Because the law of God is uh, uh, a revelation of his character. You see that? Mm -hmm. So that type of grace that this Protestant world is trying to send out, in reality, is a distortion of what God is. And that's why when Satan comes to uh, impersonate Christ, uh, the whole world is going to accept him, you know? Because it's that grace void of the law of God. Mm -hmm. He's going to come to say, you know, to establish, yes, you know, I have changed the, the, the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday, and people are going to embrace him. They're going to say, hallelujah, you know, the millennium has started, you know, has begun. They are embracing, in reality, the, uh, 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 a perverted character of God, right? And um, I had also thought that grace that leads to disobedience to the law or to obedience to the law of God freely is a reflection of that same character of Christ that he came to show in this world. So that's what he was showing when he came to preach the, the, the grace of or the kingdom of God has come. Mm -hmm. Now the kingdom of God has come and it's it's about to it's about to you could say to come to a to a new stage, right? Yeah. <laughs> because this grace is about to end. Yeah. You know? Sure. And we're about to go into judgment. So God is calling us to invite those that are on the byways and the highways, you know, the side of the roads to come in, you know, because those that had the light in the beginning have not heard and have not heeded to the morning or to the invitation. And just like Josh said, like we're going to get to the point where eventually it comes to, to judgment. And 
Uh, I want to share Matthew 25, verse 31 and 32. Um, and it says, I'm sorry, I don't have that one on PowerPoint either, but uh, I just thought of it right now. It says, when the, the Son of Man shall come in his glory and the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and shall uh, separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. So I think that's like, uh, you know, something that's like, that's powerful. It's like, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's a warning, you know. And it says, uh, this this kingdom is the future. It is not it is not to be set up until the second advent of Christ. So, like we said before, like the disciples had like the wrong image, you know, you know what kingdom was to come. Yeah. So, if anyone has a comment or would like to um, have a question or something, if you want to share it, you know, just walk in, you know, interrupt if you need. We'll give you the word. Just a side note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna share uh, in. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it is. Oh, it's uh, in Gethsemane. I shared that one. It's on Greek controversy 347.2. Uh, it says in Gethsemane, the cup of woe trembled in his hand. He might even uh, then have wiped the blood of sweat from his brow and uh, have left the guilty race to perish in their iniquity. Uh, had he done this, there could have been no redemption for the fallen. Wow. Like that's really powerful. Like. I think like just one like just wrong, one wrong mistake and that would have been it you know yeah um, like I was reading earlier with Mario at my house um, about Daniel and I was talking about had Daniel you know took in one wrong step with his friends you know according to um, you know the, uh, Babylon how they wanted them to, to eat of the meat and drink of the wine but Daniel and, uh, and his friends had a different you know and they had a different appetite completely different appetite but had they stepped in the wrong direction that would have just led down a different path they would have continue to take the wrong steps and i think it shows you know uh how, how powerful you know god is and you know how thankful we should be for you know the sacrifice that jesus jesus did for us and just seeing the devotion of jesus christ i mean there was so much in the balance you know mm -hmm. and if he wouldn't have that intimate communion with his father you know that devotion the constant devotion i mean and and just Seeing how everything would have been lost, we would have been lost. Yeah. Um, now it's up to us, you know. We don't have any excuse. We've been built. We've been having light over light over light that's been building up towards us. You know, the light that we have now is like the most like I could probably put it this way: the brightest light right. human beings have ever had. You know, mm -hmm. you know Moses didn't have this light. You know the the prophets. It says they they yearn to see this these days. You know. And, and we're seeing them. We're seeing them. You know, a lot of people say, man, why did I have to be born in this time of age? You know, coronavirus. A lot of people are saying, you know, this is the worst year ever. And they complain because we've lived in this society where we feel entitled, you know. And, um, and it's interesting to see, you know, we just think we have it very hard. But I think instead of seeing it from that point of view, we should see in the point of view that this is the best time to be alive, you know. Yeah. This is the best time to come out and, you know, Take and give a better reflection of who God is, you know, mm -hmm. of God's true character, right? And of the light that He's given us. Um, and, and it's also a warning because here the disciples, it says they had the light, you know. I mean, they knew the prophecies and everything, but it says that it was their pride in, in the in their heart, mm -hmm. the pride in their heart that was leading them to cling so tenaciously to the false teaching of their time and to pass unheeded the Savior's words showing the true nature of his kingdom and pointing forward to his agony and death. And I was thinking, what type of truth am I clinging on to that maybe has been popular, even amongst us as a, Advent, in the Adventist culture, mm -hmm. that I have left, you know, well, I believe it and it's just truth and just left it there, but I haven't really, you know, it, what, where's the proof, you know? Yeah. I haven't seen for myself what the Lord wants is to know for ourselves where to find it. Yes, and there's this we'll whole it and, we accept. and there's this whole generation of Seventh Adventists and the young, you know, from probably 35 to 40, you know, younger, mm -hmm. that have been raised in this culture of Adventism, but they don't have, you know, the reasons in their hands of why they believe what they believe. Yeah. And I'm not going to say, you know, they. I'm going to say we, you know, because we're just. Sure. It's I I I imply myself in this. Um. And I think if, if God is calling us to awake in this time, 
uh, and, and that verse of Isaiah 60 comes to, our, to my mind. It says, arise and shine because darkness has come to this world, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's calling us, go back to the word. Go listen to what I've said. You don't have to fear the future yet. You don't have to fear any coronavirus because I've already stated everything that's going to happen in order, you know? And just like Jesus was sure of what he, what he was stepping into, we have to be sure of what we're uh, of facing in the future, you know? And we should share this, right? Um, but I think if there's something that is distracting us from the word of God and understanding biblical prophecy for the future, it sins in our life. Yeah. It's it's really in reality a, a cherished sin that we've been messing and fooling around with. That is the biggest hindrance to to knowing. And in reality, you know, we have a test that's coming up. Is it, what what makes us as advances, you know, lift up our heads and you know wake up a little with other stuff is that we know that there's a test coming. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a, a there's there's a time of probation that is ending, and we're gonna be we're gonna be ex is gonna be examined, and we're gonna be it's gonna be seen. God is gonna be seeing what we've been building our character on. Right. If it's wood, if it's hay, or if it's you know durable material, you know, mm -hmm. um, that gold, that pure gold from the Word of God and faith in the Word of God is gonna withstand in these last days, you know. So I think this is he's doing what Joel says and you know what these other churches are saying. It's incredible, you know. These other churches, you know, that are wanting to bring, you know, Sunday worship and all this stuff, they're ahead of us. Right. <laughs> In a way, they're ahead of us. They're proclaiming to everyone, we need a revival, we need a, a call a general assembly, we need to humble ourselves before God, we need to forsake our sins. Yeah. And and it's interesting that we don't hear it that much in those that know the truth for this time, you know, as we should. And and that's why we're doing these videos and these studies, so we can encourage each other in, in our spirits of work or whatever we are. If we're in quarantine, in a way, you know, share the word that you have, the light that you have, you know? That's what I was going to share there. Uh, yeah, I, w I wanted to share, you know, kind of going according to what Josh had going there. It says, uh, to them uh, was to be entrusted the work of heralding to all nations the glorious gospel of the risen Lord. Um and then a couple paragraphs after it says, what a change was wrought in the hearts of the disciples as they looked once more on the love uh, uh, countenance of their mm -hmm. master. Uh, in a more complete and perfect sense than ever before, had they found uh, him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. The uncertainty and anguish and despair have been placed to perfect assurance, uh, to unclouded faith. What marvel that after, uh, sorry, what marvel that after his ascension, they were uh, continually in the temple, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, an uncertain thing I wish. Perfect assurance that unclouded faith. What marvel that after his ascension, uh, they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. That what that last verse uh, where it says his ascension, they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. I feel like it's crazy because I wrote here, it took Jesus' death and resurrection for them to finally wake up. To finally, to finally wake up. Get it. And I'm like, when I read that, I was like, like, have you seen like all the miracles that he made that he did before? You know, like he healed the blind, he healed the sick, you know, like. It took, you know, Jesus' death and resurrection for them to finally wake up and get it. In a way, right there, you see, you see actually what sin causes in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, that sin that sometimes we're like, ah, it's just a piece. I know I shouldn't be eating this or, you know, I know I shouldn't be watching this, but I haven't done it in a long time. But I'm going to do it this time just to satisfy myself. You know, that little sin that's in your life that you just you know sometimes pet and sometimes you don't and sometimes you leave for a long time but you come back to it yeah. that sin just that sin is able to neutralize the whole gospel in your life and not let you see the truth the wonderful truth that god has given us mm -hmm. and it was so they were broken god i mean jesus brought them to like the ground they slammed in the ground you know they were just like face planted on the ground you know um, Peter, look how humiliating, you know? Yeah. He was so boastful. He's like, nah, I'm not going to leave you, Master. Right. You know, I'll give my life for you, you know? Three times, Three times he was like, I'm a curse. It says, with curse, he was cursed yeah. and deny his master. And that's when Jesus was right in front of him and turned at him. That's, that's the, I think that's the nature of having your own, thinking that your, your power within yourself is, you know, sufficient enough. Exactly. To, to that's, that that's the danger of sin, that yeah. if it clouds your, your, your spiritual sight, 
and you start seeing yourself as capable of, you know, I can do it. Overcoming anything. Overcoming. I can do whatever is coming up. You know, I see whatever the, you know, I, I see that, you know, people are uniting and, they, you know, there's going to come a Sunday round, there's going to come a trial. I can do it. Yeah. I want to tell you, be careful. If you have this attitude, you are, we are the ones that, if we have this attitude, we are the ones that need to go to the ground and like Jacob, you know, ask God for forgiveness and to help us to see. You know, that is why the, the Church of Laodicea is called, you know, they're blind. They don't see their own spiritual condition. Yeah. You know, they feel rich. They feel like, yeah, I can do it. They have that Peter attitude. That comfort. Yeah, yeah, we're comfortable. Yeah. We, we, we have the attitude of Peter. And and it, I God forbid that he makes us go through that experience so that we can know, you know, that we are destitute, that we are blind and poor and wretched, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and this is the time so that we can seek the Lord and have Him, you know, search our hearts and t and show us that we what what our real condition is. Because if we don't feel, and this is why every true revival is preceded by true repentance, mm -hmm. by true knowledge of the Word of God. There can't be revival without it. So that is our greatest need. Our greatest need is to humble, repent, study the Word of God. And the latter rain have the holy spirit of god in our lives so we can uh go with boldness that's right right the experience of the disciples is if you see if you notice this chapter is telling us everything we can repeat itself mm -hmm. yeah. it's repeating itself. it's repeating itself. it's repeating itself it happened to the jewish nation it happened to the disciples and now we go ahead and it says it happened to william miller, william miller. and it yeah. was in that time you know a lot of them had received the message that jesus was coming but mm -hmm. then boom place planted again you know why yeah. Because it says they have received the popular messages, and a lot of them, their heart wasn't straight with God. I think, Alan, you want to say something? Um, thanks for the input. yeah um, i think oh, i wanted to go off what alan said i think uh, an important verse to overcome you know uh, is found in romans 8 verse 37 it says and all these things they said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and who is he that loved us jesus christ jesus christ the one who gave himself on the cross you know because of his blood we are saved from darkness that's right that's right well, we need to come god has called us to uh, to that to come back to to go to that throne of grace mm -hmm. you know um if if you feel you once we feel we're destitute and we're blind and wretched he's inviting us the door of grace is still open right that's wonderful news you that's know news, yeah. I, I don't know about you guys but i mean i know in the midst of all this coronavirus and a lot of things that people are everywhere in the cities i mean we have a great news we have a marvelous news that we should have we should be having the attitude that disciples had you know that they were just praising the lord in the in the in the in the in the temple you know but in reality it's a lot of a lot of us we don't have it i think yeah yeah let's we have to be thankful that you know we're not in matthew 25 verse 32. <laughs> that we're, we're not, not being yeah. divided right now we're, we're not being divided right now but the yeah. time and i think the signs are telling us that that time is about to come yeah, that's true and this is precious time every minute every hour is counted in our favor to be building this character and i think it's important to look at it as not as oh we have time but more as like hey time is coming it's a warning oh yeah because right now. that's another warning that a lot of it says the wicked servant says in his heart yeah. oh you know this this is going to take another seven years so, you know we yeah. still a lot need a lot of things to happen it's a dangerous zone. if you have that attitude if you think ah you know i still don't see the hand of the papacy you know too much into this or whatever mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of things we can't see 
um, that are going on in darkness, like that quote I, I put a while ago. But we have to, by faith, like Noah did, right. believe that it's coming. Because it's going to be revealed. It's going to explode on us one of these days, just like this virus exploded. And, oh, it's going to be too late for a lot of us that have hindered and have put this, you know, further in the future. You know, they have, they have waited and delayed their preparation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was reading from a pastor, why, why does Jesus say, be careful or pray that your flight will, will not be in the winter mm-hmm. or the Sabbath? And he was saying, what does the Sabbath and winter have in common? What do they have in common? They don't have basically anything in common, you know? Yeah. And um, he was saying that the only thing that they have in common is that for both of them, you have to make preparation. preparation yeah. Just like the Israelites did. When they yeah. get the manna, they had to do it twice on Friday. Exactly. <laughs> twice on Friday. exactly. Yeah. Also, for the Sabbath, you have to prepare. Yeah. And for winter, you have to prepare. You see the squirrels, you know, they're digging their head. They're getting a bunch of, you know, the nuts and everything. You have to, if people back then wouldn't prepare for winter. They were dead. And basically, in a way, there's a message there. God is telling us this is the time for, for, for preparation because your rest is coming. It's coming in heaven, and your, and your winter is coming. Troubled times are coming before that. You have to prepare today. Don't leave it for tomorrow. And, and that word of Hebrews comes to my mind where it says, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't stiffen it. Believe by faith, right? So that happened to the Millerites. They accepted the error, pop, they accepted popular, the popular view as to what constitutes the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And that's where they were, you know, they were led astray. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm going to read something from, uh, from the book. It says, uh, the quote, it says, As the disciples went out preaching, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. So Miller and his associates proclaimed, uh, that the uh, longest and uh, the last prophetic period brought to bi- brought to view in the Bible was about to expire, that the judgment was at hand and the everlasting kingdom was to be ushered in. Yeah, and I think that I mean, obviously we know we know because we're here now. Obviously, you know, we see that that, that wasn't that you know that that wasn't right at the time. Uh, but I think it's important like to see that everybody had a specific you know light to share in a, at a specific time. You know, yeah, that's right. Specific time and date. That's right. So. Um, um, any Mario, you have anything to say about this? Or no? <laughs> uh, that, there's a quote out of which one do you just read right there? Uh, I read uh, from As the Disciples Went uh, Out Preaching. Oh, okay, now you're, you're further back. Yeah. Um, so, when in regards to the Millerites or the Adventists that were accepting the, the coming of Christ, um, there was a message it says, The message of the first and second angel. Uh, that were proclaiming the coming of Christ, and said it was designed for the testing and purification of the church. So that was found in uh, Great Controversy 353.1. Yeah, that's 353.1 in Great Controversy. It says the message that they received was designed for testing and purification of the church. So can it be that the message that we have today regarding the sanctuary, regarding the Sabbath especially, the three angels' message, especially the third angel's message, that it's getting more and more prominent as time goes by, the Sabbath, you know, the mark of the beast. Yeah. Can it be that this message right now is testing us? It is. And if it's testing us, and if we're not he- heeding the warning, we're going to be, you know, set aside. We're going to be, you know, mm-hmm. left in darkness. Um, I, I think it's important to know, uh, to know, like, where, you know, individually, like ourselves, you know, like, I include me, like, you know where where are our priorities at? You know, yeah. Like where where do we put you know, like most of our time into you know, uh, right under that way where Josh just read it says, um, they were uh, they were to be led to see whether their affections were set upon this world or upon Christ in heaven. So you know, are, are our minds fixed upon heaven or are they fixed still upon things that you know are temporary here? Yeah, and it continues saying they profess to love the Savior. Mm-hmm. Now they were going to prove their love. Yeah. <laughs> it says it's not about just saying it, but it's about living it. Too. Exactly. It right. says it was sent in mercy to arouse them to seek the Lord with repentance and humiliation. So I believe that these things that are coming to this world are, are here to, you know, to prove us. You say you go to church every Saturday, you go to church every weekend, and you sing and you praise me and you say you love me. Now prove it. Prove it in the midst of fear. Mm-hmm. Prove it in the midst of danger, you know. Prove it in the midst of ridicule and, you know, persecution. Prove it. 
Right. You know, and and it's crazy because they did prove it. You know, like the uh, eventually it says the disappointment. You know, the great disappointment, and then the, uh, eventually it says in uh, Great Controversy three hundred fifty three point two. It says it would test the heart. It would test the hearts of those who have professed to receive the warning. Would they rashly give up their experience, or would they, in prayer and humility, seek uh, to discern where they had failed to comprehend? Yeah. So I think it's 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 important to know, like you know, like. Uh, so an important lesson for, for us to learn from them was that you know they did fail, but at the same time they're like, okay, where did we go wrong? You know, yeah. where did we go wrong? They got back up. They got back up. That's yeah. right. That's right. But a lot of people, and we have to take note of this: the ones that stayed firm or stayed searching the scriptures after 1844 was just, I think, some people say it was less than 500 or something like that. Uh, out of like thousands of people that had accepted that this uh, message, you know, right. and in the disciples. How many were following Jesus and how many were left when 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 he was crucified? Mm-hmm. I don't think any, just like I think just the the women, you know, including the mother of Jesus and John, you know, they were there by the cross. That's right. But most of them just fled. Just fled. Just fled. Yeah. Can it be that we we might face something like this as a as a remnant church? Can it be that I, I asked myself this question? I don't know what you guys think over there in uh in Zoom, but do you guys think we might be, you know, come up to a time where God is going to try us in a way that is going to be so painful that it's going to test each one of us and the church collectively? Yeah. That it, a lot of a lot of people are just going to, you know, start following the master like they did, you know, when when Jesus was crucified. Yeah. Can it be that we're going to face a great disappointment in these last days? Yeah. What do you guys think? Share your comments. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, it's something that I've been thinking about lately, you know, um, is that especially as we, I see our, our how fragile we are, you know, uh, how fragile our spirituality is. So I don't know if you have anything else to share. Yeah, I had, a, I guess, just one last quote, uh, the found in uh, Great Controversy 354.1. Uh, it says, uh, it would teach them as uh, only such an experience uh, could. The danger of accepting the theories and interpretations of men instead of making the Bible its own interpreter. So I think, you know, especially the, the times that we live in, it's important to look at, you know, uh, the Bible ultimately, and even Ellen White points to the Bible, you know, like you know, the Bible and the Bible only, um, that that's the light and the darkness, yeah. you know, like, you know, the Bible, that, you know, our Bible is the sword, it's a light that we have now, it's a, it's a blueprint, you know, to, to bring us home one day. And I think it's it's important that we, you know, take take that seriously instead of, you know, just making our own opinions as like as the disciples did, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it tells me a lot about the character of God, you know. Um, God is seeking for true worshipers, you know. True, you know, um, it's tender-hearted, you know, committed people that would that really love him, you know. If um, it reminds me of Gideon, you know, and the and the soldiers, mm-hmm. those that were afraid, he said. Those of you that are fearful, you know, go back home to decimate the army. You know, they were already a small army, and a lot of them left just because of fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's funny that it's, not, it's interesting, it's not funny, but it's interesting how a lot of fear is, is taking hold of our hearts, you know. Yeah. Um, and maybe God is telling us, uh, those that are fearful, that don't want to get, you know, fearful of, the, of what's coming up, you know, we have the three angels' message, we have a war up ahead. Those that are fearful, go back home, you know. Mm-hmm. Can it be that many are already starting to head back home, you know? That's true. And and then, you know, he brought them to the river, and that seems, you know, a moment of pleasure, of ease, you know? And in the moment of ease and pleasure, you know, it's like those that aren't focused on what's ahead, you know, on the mission, yeah. take them out. They weren't, they weren't to volunteer, they weren't going to voluntarily leave like the ones that were fearful. No, Gideon was going to take them out. And, and it seems like, you know, God is doing this. We might be doing the same thing in these days. You know, because we have a, a war, and it's a spiritual warfare that we're gonna about to face. God's people is about to face. It's the great controversy coming to its climax. It's the the Armageddon. You know, mm-hmm. Satan and his evil spirit, the three unions. You know, the threefold union is starting to unite to war against God, right? And God is preparing His people today, and He's leading them through these circumstances. Because we have to remember that everything that's going on, the coronavirus, whoever is in control, or if it's just spontaneous, whatever, whatever you believe, but God is in control. Mm-hmm. And if he permitted it to come to, to this world in this time, 
is because he is testing and proving his people. Mm -hmm. It's painful. It's scary. Yeah. But he permits it because he knows what's best for us. Yeah. And he wants us to know what's in our hearts. You That's know? Right. Yeah. And ultimately, we have that promise you know, of his second coming. So. Of his second coming. That is time. You know? yeah. um, this world is not your home. This world is not your home. We're going to a better place, right? That's right. So I I, uh, I hope it's uh, it's, a, it's been a blessing to you. Um, the, this uh, the, the review of this book. I was seeing, and I, I want to finish with this. I was seeing in um, three of the end, and my kids were seeing this um, this like commercial of like this uh, dogs or something like that. And there's a dog. That was uh that was like very obedient. It was very very interesting. And this the owner was teaching us how you know uh, we could this big like juicy bone. You know I don't know if it was you know paid steamer. Or I don't know what it was, but it looked juicy. Even I was like, mm, you know, it's tasty, you know. But it looked like big and and you know it even had some meat. And the dog comes right away and he's like you know he's like salivating and everything. It was tempting for him, mm -hmm. but the owner tells him sit. And he sits, you know, and it's interesting because a lot of these animals teach us more about what we should be doing, you know, <laughs> but um, he sits in front of temptation, right? Yeah. And then the dog does something very interesting. He's looking at the bone and every fiber of his, like, of his being is telling him to take that bone. And you know, dogs that aren't very obedient, they'll just let them take, it. take it from me. I, I, take it from me. <laughs> I had a dog that would bite me. He would be, he would, the dog was an educated dog and he sits. And he's looking at the bone, but he knows he can't he can't resist that temptation. Mm -hmm. So you know what the dog does? The dog starts looking away. He looks away, he doesn't look at the bone. And that I, I, I saw some other dogs that they would look at their yeah. at their at their owner, at their master. They would take off their eyes from the bone and put it on their master, just waiting for the command. Yeah. And you know what? I was thinking, you know, a lot of times we fall into temptation because we don't take our eyes off temptation, mm -hmm. you know? Because we don't put our eyes on our master. We don't put our eyes in the word of God. And I believe God is calling us in these times to put our eyes in Jesus Christ, you know? Um, to put our eyes in, in him, and he's going he's gonna to help us go through. So, are you canceled? Are you guys good? Are you yeah. Good? yeah. <laughs> We're gonna pray. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and close with the word of prayer. Yeah, before we, before we uh, I'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this Sabbath, uh, and I thank you so much for the um, this chapter, Lord, that we're able to to review, Lord. Um, that we still have this light and darkness, Lord, that we're able to still read your word, Lord, um, the Bible. And I ask that you uh, help us, Lord, to understand it, um, to uh, to. Truly understand it, Lord, and to not uh, miss anything, Lord. Uh, I pray that uh, ultimately we'll be able to see you in heaven. Um, and I ask that you please be with those who are listening online as well. Please be with them and their families as well. And uh, keep them healthy. And uh, I pray for everybody else that's here to uh, rest in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, it was a pleasure having you. If you have any comments, share them right now. <laughs> no comments or questions. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You know what the problem is? I think that's the internet connection. Uh, it's not that great. It's too slow to it's live stream it. That's good. We finished my two hours and everything else, but oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the is internet connection. It's not. Uh, the end now?